York, New York, big city of dreams. New York, New York, big city of dreams. Yes, let's go, let's go. What's going on? This is Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time Show. He give you that Nick's talk just in the nick of time. And guess what? You already know. We outside, okay? Because the Knicks beat the 76ers at home 111 2 one oh four and i'm gonna read some stats all right og and anobi gave you 11 points four rebounds and steal hartenstein gave you six points seven rebounds three assists and two blocks brunson gave you 22 points seven assists seven rebounds and a steal bojan came off the bench with 13 and seven big mitch gave you eight points 12 rebounds and four blocks Let's go, bitch. Let's go. McBride. McBride gives you 21 points and four assists. All right. And we can't. We got to talk about Josh Hart. All right. Because Josh Hart stepped into this game and he came to play and gave you 22 points, 13 rebounds, two assists. And what did he have? Uh, the career high four threes in the playoffs, shooting four from eight. Leaving that boy open. Don't leave that boy open no more, all right? The Knicks did their thing. We were worried about the non-Brunson minutes. Well, guess what? The bench came. The bench showed up and now scored them 42 to 7, all right? We outscored them 42 to 7 from the bench. We out-rebounded them 66 to 41. And we shot better from three. 45% from three to 34% from three. And the Knicks take home the win and beat the 76ers. Game, set, browsers. Everybody talking about, oh my God, oh the Knicks, oh the Knicks, I can't believe they won. They should avoid the 76ers. Why we do that? What are they saying now? We don't duck the smoke. We run into the smoke, okay? We got the horses. We got the players. We got the vibes. We got the defense. We got the shooting. We got the team to take down the 76ers. And we proved it today by taking on the 76ers and taking them down game one next. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. And I'm going to introduce you to my guys. I'm going to introduce you to my guys first and foremost. It is the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the stats and the facts. Ryan G's in the building. Knicks have several MVPs tonight. Yes. That helped them prop that helped propel them to the victory. I'm outside, but I'm still going to keep the serious vibes. Job not done. Nice game one victory. We got three more to go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Job not done. Job not done. And you already know it's the Latin assassin. Lee Escobedo's in the building. What's going on, Lee? What's going on? I want to tell a little story. 2004 was the first time I ever watched the Knicks in the playoffs. And I grew up very poor. My dad had to work Saturdays in the morning to make ends meet. He was working in a machine shop. And uh, it was the first time I ever watched the playoffs. So I was calling him nonstop, letting him know what was going on, letting him know how hard Penny Hardaway was working, letting him know how hard Kurt Thomas was working um, because he had to be at work and he had to put in those hours to make sure we had food on the table and the rent and lights were paid. Uh, so today, to be able to watch my dad, self made millionaire, uh, building homes here in South Dallas uh, for black and brown people, it was one of my proudest moments to be able to watch in his mansion on his big ass TV that he made from the ground up. To be able to watch our knits win together and from we where we came from to where we are now was a success story in its own. And that's not even beginning to talk about the knits, but the, the fact that I can my life is parallel with how the up of the knits with the up of my own life and to be able to watch now instead of being alone in Dallas, just me and my pops, to have you three with me in the chat and Fritz and Knits Twitter to be able to enjoy this win together is something special. Let's go, Knits. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. And of course, you already know rookie of the year in serious business right now. I see, I see the all black hoodies in the bottom. I see, I don't have the black hoodie, but I got the black sweat. I, got the black sweat. <laughs> I see what's going on. I catch the vibes. It's our girl, <laughs> our woman. I'm sorry, our queen, <laughs> XD1 Baller, Ebony in the building. I already know. I already know. I already know what this conversation is going today. I already know where this conversation is going today. I already know you passing out the apology forms. I already know where it's coming. She told y'all. She told y'all. Print them up. Print them up. 
Hit him up. Hit him up. Come on, there's levels to this. It is levels to this. Come My on. guy Mitch showing playing discipline defense on his Bill Russell. You ain't gotta block every shot. You just gotta make people think you're gonna block every mm. shot. Mm. <laughs> like, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. man. Let's yeah, man. Chat. He did that. He did that. Uh let's get to it, man. I'm excited to talk about this game. I, yes, yes. I, I, I want to start off by saying this. There were a few players who caught flack all year, all year long. And it's crazy. The reason we won this game was probably the, the players who caught the most flack all year. And the only one who, who didn't contribute who caught the most flack was, was Alec Burks. All right. <laughs> but everybody else. Everybody else who caught flack all season long was the reason we won this game. Deuce, Josh showed Hart, up showed up. Showed Mitch, showed up. Bojan, all of those guys are the reason why we won this game. If, th if those guys didn't show out, we lose this game. So give it up. Give it up to the guys who kept fighting, who kept crawling, who just... Worked every day, figured out the game, trusted their teammates. They block out the noise and didn't care what any fan had to say. They just came to work and did their job. All right. And there's a lot of places to start, but I'm starting with Deuce McBride, who I'm not going to hold you. I was like, after the second quarter, when the Knicks were down, I think like 10 and the bench came in. And I was like, oh, here you go to the Mount Brunson minutes. What are we going to do? The bench got the lead back in a flash. Deuce, Bojan, Mitch got it back in the flash. And I'm looking, I'm looking out how Deuce is, is guarding Maxi. And I remember how Deuce was the exact dog, dog, exactly, dog. I remember how Deuce was guarding Maxi before this game. I'm just like, Tibbs, I don't know. This might, this might be time to start Deuce. It might be time to start Deuce in the series, especially if they're going small. With, Ky with, with Kyrie, uh, not Kyrie, um, Kyle Lowry and Brunson you might want to consider it. And lo and behold, lo and behold, Tibbs cl closed with Deuce. Closed with Deuce and Jalen Brunson. So to me, Deuce, Deuce actually played on ball. All season long, he's been playing off ball. Crunch time, he's playing on ball. Hits a big three off a of screen with Jalen Brunson in the game, called his own number. Ran the offense, moved the ball, played defense, hit big shots, locked down Maxi. Because he, he, did you hear him from Maxi after he got back in the game in the fourth quarter? No. I don't know, man. I, I know we got OG to, to, to lock down certain players, but Maxi seems to have OG's number. I think we need to call Deuce's number. I don't know. That's what, I, that's what I'm looking at. I don't, I don't know what. I see. I see a lot of head shaking. Yeses. Who wants? Who wants to talk about it? I'll I'll start off then. Um. Yeah. I was definitely gonna mention that. You know. You already said it. I think for game two, I think Dibs has to definitely take it into consideration that he has to start McBride on Maxi in the backcourt to have a Brunson McBride backcourt because when OG's on Maxi, I think Max is a bit too quick for him, and Max is able to drive by him and get to the basket at ease, and. McBride is really the only guy the Knicks have that can really shut down Maxi and not get and not allow to get Maxi going. So I think McBride does have to probably start from game two forward. Like I because you have to remember playoffs is about matchups. Yeah. And I even go a bit further. I think Mitchell Robinson should start as well for the rest of this series. And, and then I think the lineup going into game two should be Mitchell Robinson, OG, Josh Hart, McBride, and Brunson because this because the series is about matchups and that starting five matches up the best against the Sixers. So I think that so I think they should definitely have heavy consideration to to start that lineup going forward. But McBride, this I think this series I think this series is really like the first like the first series where he's actually had like significant minutes yeah. in the playoffs. And he showed out. 
he showed out. I, he shocked me because I wasn't expecting this from McBride for like the first game where he's played significant minutes in the playoffs. He had some big shots, especially when the Knicks were down and the Knicks needed a spark. To get back into the game, McBride hit some big three-pointers to get the Knicks back in the game. The defense he played on, Maxi was exceptional. And McBride is one of my MVPs for this game. If it if it wasn't for McBride's play, I don't know what it, I don't know what would have happened with the Knicks going down the stretch. But exceptional defense, great shot making. You have to give McBride his flowers for this game. He showed he showed out. He showed out. Absolutely. Let the queen go next. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh the, my keys for the game were we can't we can't beat ourselves, which was meaning we had to hit our free throws, play defense without fouling, and take care of the ball. I th I think we did fairly well with everything except for maybe the free throws. We missed a couple free throws. But other than that, I think uh, otherwise that we, we we did very well. Um with Deuce. Was one of the three three guys I mentioned. The three guys I mentioned actually had great games. Josh Hart took a minute. He was he had a little crazy fouls here and there. You know he had to get it settled down. Yeah. You know he he had to settle down. But once he did, he didn't have four three pointers all season until today. Yeah. Crazy. Until, until today. Crazy. All right. So. Deuce McBride, I, I I knew I had a feeling that he would have a a big game because last preseason it stuck out to me that he only played five minutes, but those five minutes y'all was so impactful, and if he could hit jump shots, I'm like okay his defense is going to impact games, so if he gets his jump shot he gets to stay on the you know stay on the court right. So I had nothing but faith. And, you know, you hear the stories about him in college, too, being always the underdog, West Virginia, you know, what they did. I had faith in Deuce that he would have a big game. I don't know. It, it just I, – I did. So he was one, one of the three. And then my third, Big Mitch. <laughs> so, yes, I I, I definitely – it's deep. Deuce McBride, I didn't, I didn't think the lights would ever be too bright for him, to be honest. I, I seen what he 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 did last year when he wasn't supposed to play. You understand? So yeah, now I agree. you expected to play, and and you get time to lock as a defender. You get time to lock down on a specific who you're guarding. Like this is just we don't play another team next tomorrow. It's you as a defender. You pick up ten. You see little things. You pick up little things, and they're gonna be all right. I agree. <laughs> Shout out Robert Paris, 499 Super Chat. Winning is so damn sweet. Tibbs are already watching film and making adjustments. We love you, Robert Paris. That's my uncle right there. Also, shout out another Super Chat. We got Isaiah Ramos, $23. 23 for number 23, Mitchell Robinson. He was a difference maker today. I absolutely agree. Let's go KOT show. Best Knits game, game show out there. 100, 100% agree. Mitchell Robinson, the MVP. I'll be the first to apologize, Miss Miss Queen Ebony. I said that I said that the gap between Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein was not as wide as we, we all think. No, no, no. I was wrong. Because Joel, <laughs> Joel Embiid on one leg hooked Isaiah Hartenstein. Everyone knows I love Hartenstein. I, I, I got a love for Berlin. It's my favorite city in the world. Let me tell you something. Isaiah Hartenstein got absolutely Good in every way possible by Joel Embiid in that first quarter. Tibbs, shout out Tibbs, the the, uns, the unsung MVP of this game after Mitch. Benched iHeart and played Mitch the most minutes he's played since the time back from injury. And I believe Embiid only scored one field goal on him. The rest were free throws. And the one field goal he scored was that dunk that sent him to the floor. Mitchell Robinson's ball denial, his one-on-one -on -one defense, the rim protection, the footwork. Staying in front of Embiid was elite. It was a master class and bid on bid defense. Pause, no ditty. I loved watching Mitch have that moment of glory after being out for months with an injury to come back and dominate in that fashion. Still got looked off of for lobs, but found his points where he could. And when he got the offensive rebound, when he finally threw it down for a dunk, I was Adam. I was up in the air. I was like, Mitch, that's what I'm talking about. Dunk the damn ball. Because when you do, no one can stop you. And then they hit those two free throws. It was a full and yes. game. Robinson 
clutch from top to bottom. To me, he was an MVP, the difference maker tonight, being able to contain an MVP player like Joel Embiid. Mitchell Robinson, game ball. Wow. Uh, yeah, I want to say something, too. Oh, you want to say something? I see you took, you took yourself on mute, Ebony? It's levels to this. It's <laughs> levels to this. That's all I'm going to say. Like, I'm I'm just, my guy's a dog. He's a dog. First one in the gym today. A dog. Like, come I agree. on. Yeah. Like, w- once you got that defensive part, you good in my book. <laughs> I agree. You, you good in my book because the offense can come. Yeah. And that that second jump is looking that he getting in shape. I said that week was going to be big for him because he can get some legs. His timing, he can get get back and be him. He looked good. He looked like he shed a little pounds and everything in that week. Yeah, he did. He like, looked a little lighter. He definitely yeah, a little lighter. That second jump was very Carmelo-ish. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it was very, very, like, I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. That was probably <laughs> one of the Mitch that. plays of the game where, where Mitch timed the block on Maxi. Yeah. Then saved the ball from coming out of coming out of bounds and throwing it off for him to save the possession. That, that was another second jump. And the other second jump was when when he did the dunk. Right. He got a, he missed the got his own rebound and did a jump. And B didn't jump once. He jumped twice. And and here's the here's the thing I've been saying about Mitch. Since last season, I always felt like Hardenstein actually shocked me the way he played and beat in the regular season. Cause he actually shocked me how well he played and beat in regular season. Did not see that today. <laughs> Definitely seeing to see it today. Hopefully that that Hartenstein comes back. But for me, when I argued about why we should keep Mitch, it's always been Mitch is better suited to play bigger centers. Because uh, there are a few big centers in the NBA where we get ate up because of the size difference. MB cannot bully Mitch like he bullies anybody else on this roster. And there's not like a whole bunch of bully centers on this league, but there's a few. There's like Hint, there's like Embiid, but Valanciunas, or the long guys like Clint Capella, or like there's guys like that who we might struggle with if we just have one center. But when we have Mitch, it neutralizes that. And I'm glad that he got into shape today and he was able to prove that, hey, I can take on these type of centers. I'm the matchup you want to go to if you want to take out MB. Now, hopefully, Arnstein can get it back and get back to what he did before. I also feel like Hartenstein was a little nervous because first shot of the game, he only got one shot. He got that one floater where he missed it. And But, you know, the whole team was kind of missing in the beginning. It was a lot of in and outs. I think we were all kind of jittery. Except for <laughs> go figure Juice McBride. <laughs> but I think uh Mitch showed his value today on why we need him and how he matches up against those big boy centers in the NBA. All right. So I uh, shout out to Mitch McBride uh, Deuce McBride, who taking the step, actually playmaking in the fourth quarter, having Jalen Brunson play off ball in the fourth quarter. Which is uh, crazy to see because he hasn't really been doing that during the season. And shout out to Mitch, who stepped up and showed his worth and played 30 minutes a day. And th- he played so well, Hartenstein stayed on the bench this game. Um, but now, but we need to talk about Josh Hart. We need to talk about Josh Hart. Because if you watch the, the pregame breakdown yesterday that we did, Lee talked about how Josh Hart was an X factor, the big X factor. And I said, that baby is going to have to hit jump shots and three to have to hit three pointers because they're going to purposely leave him open. So he can play well, but there's going to be a time where they're going to leave him open in a big moment and he has to hit a shot. And boy, did he do that today. <laughs> I think he knew. I don't think you can go into the series and not be prepared to shoot that shot after let's be let's be, let's be, let's be, let's be frank josh hart crapped the bed last year versus miami he did he got scared he crapped the bed last year in miami he hit those shots today he hit those shots today in big moments and 
Thank God that the Knicks didn't get scared and duck the smoke and played in front of the home crowd. Because that home crowd, it gives you that a little bit of extra confidence if you're missing it. You know, that home crowd gives you the extra juice. So when he hit one and you hear the crowd go, <sighs> your, 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 your chest starts to swell up, the adrenaline gets going. Next time the ball goes to you, you're just letting it fly. Next thing you know, Josh Hart getting four threes in a row. And he's having career high, career nights. So that guy who's that perfect glue guy, that hustle guy, when he starts to hit those threes, he becomes a dangerous guy. And that's what Josh Hart was for me today, man. Dangerous. <laughs> Game ball's going to Josh Hart. One. Definitely. Definitely. And again, I, I talked about uh, Josh Hart mentioning he gets so crushing rebounds. And he got a couple of those today. Matter of fact, in the game, he got a soul crushing game ending offensive rebound. Facts. Oh. <laughs> so so yeah, he he I I've always I know players like him because I used to play like like Josh Hart. I understand, I understand him, except for I had a better jump shot. So um, but <laughs> but uh I understand what that is. The one to, to play you you fill up the whatever whatever your team needs, you're going to do. And, and even if it's just effort, even if it's just making it uncomfortable, whatever you, whatever it is, you know you're going to get effort out of him. He's not going to quit. That would, that's what you can guarantee with with Josh Hart. And, and in a playoff setting, that feels bigger because you need somebody to not ever quit, um, to not think about things. And you can tell that again. Last year was his 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 first time being in the playoffs. He's learned. True. You can see that right now. You see that he's not always just taking jump shots. He head fake and then went to the lane a couple of times, not just living and dying by the three also and not being scared of it either. So like he had a good mixture of being himself and giving and, and, and take, taking what the defense was giving. him. And on top of that, his offensive rebounds, because I think it was one of the, the, the Mitch offensive rebound. He got, but we missed a couple shots. Josh Hart got a, a rebound and and then um got fouled and he hit two. I think it was two free throws and put us back up by five or so. Mm -hmm. So like again, these soul crushing rebounds and then again helping with Jalen Brunson when it got stagnant. Who asked for the ball? Right, it was Josh Hart. <laughs> it was Josh Hart. Let me let me help get get something going. So, like, invaluable. We have so many people that can impact the game in so many different ways. That's why we're so dangerous. Because you can get the guy that rebounds, gives you 10 rebounds or so, and you could say, huh, get your, get your, get Jalen Brunson a, a jump shot, please. Or, or get us a bucket if you start from, you know, get some momentum kind of thing, you know? So. I agree. We're, we're uh, Josh blessed. Hart, offense rebound count, four offense rebounds for Josh Hart, five, or, five for our – Part and sign as well, and a surprise entry for our offense rebounds, who I'll talk about later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going with that one. Shout out Josh Hart. Yes, he was my X Factor. I said it on the KOT show, and I said it on SNY this morning. Shout out Dexter Henry for having me on representing KOT for that first playoff game preview. And I thought Josh Hart would average close to 20 points this series. Why? Because there is no one on Philly that has the legs and stamina to stay with him besides Matsy. And Matsy is probably not going to be guarding Josh Hart most most of the time on ball. So Josh Hart is able to run around Good and inspire guys like Kyle Lowry, Nicholas Batum, Buddy Heald, who don't have the legs or the energy or just a defensive acumen to stay with him. And he's able to be a one-man chaos to cause disruption on the offense and defensive end. And it, as J.O. has always said, he was active in a short row as a playmaker. He was crashing the boards as an offensive rebounder, and he was hitting those threes. If he hits those threes, this game could end a lot shorter yeah. than all of it expected if he's able to hit that three. Uh, it just it, it's it's not just an extra three points. It's back breaking because at that point Philly's exerting so much energy to stop the obvious Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, and the 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 option as Obi was last year, shoot all the threes you want, Obi Top. And this year it's shoot all the threes you want, Josh Hart. If he's hitting those threes at a fifty percent clip, it's over. It's over. over. It's over. It's over. Because that's all you got. <laughs> That's all y'all got. Yeah, because you're not going to be able to stop everybody else full time like that. Like, if he's hitting those threes, it's a wrap. Get the broom. <laughs> yep.
Yeah, facts. And just to throw in my two cents about Josh Hawk, because everyone pretty much said everything that needed to be said, said about his game tonight. Um, I did think that he did start the game a bit slow. You know, he it did, did take him some time to get into the rhythm of the game. He it did seem like he was a bit hesitant at times. Was he? Didn't know whether didn't know whether he should take the shot or drive to the basket, whatever the case may be. But as the game went on and he started to get his rhythm into the game, he started to become more effective. And last five minutes of the game, hit those big threes. I think it was three threes within the last five minutes, which was, you know, major for the Knicks at that time because that's when the Sixers were on the Knicks' heels, and the Knicks needed every single one of those threes yeah. to increase the lead to keep the Sixers off of them. And, and, and yeah, if Josh Hart knocks down his threes, yeah, it's pretty much game over because even the Sixers today, every time every time they they always shaded two players towards Brunson, and that, and that second player who they shaded towards Brunson was the guy who Josh Hart, who was supposed to be guarding Josh Hart, and it just let Josh Hart just roam the court and try and, and always had two guys shaded on Brunson. So Josh Hart's going to always have those shots. He's always going to have those opportunities to like get into spaces and things of that nature to make something happen. So if also all Josh Hart needs to do is just take advantage of those opportunities. And if he does, yeah, it's game set match for the Knicks. Yeah, game set match for the Knicks for sure. For sure, for sure. I'm not even going to lie. After the way Josh Hart was passing up shots, in my head, I'm like, yo, sit that man down. If he's not going to shoot, Sit it down. Yep. That's what I was thinking. I was like, man, you might have to take out Josh or Bogey. No, that's when I was saying take out Josh McBride. I was like, take out Josh McBride and we can go go small or something. You know, <laughs> I was thinking go small. Go Brunson McBride, Devo, OG, Mitch or Hardstar, whatever. I was thinking go small because I'm just like, he is not going. If he's not going to shoot, we're in trouble. But he shot the rock, give him all the credit, and he had some big ones, and he helped win the game for us. For sure. For sure, for sure. Um, also, Bojan too, man. Bojan too. About so, speaking about apologies. Speaking Let's of apologies. <laughs> Ebony, 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 and Liga. I could just trade apology papers. <laughs> I, I told I told Lee, if you already seen it, Chad, I told Lee if 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 um Bogey keep this up. I do a breakdown video and, and I sign the phone. Oh, I yeah. do it all. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I got to give his props because Lee said all year long, <laughs> when it comes playoff time, Bogey has been, been there. He's done that. And he will, he will perform in the playoffs. It's playoff time. First shot he made. Weird one, but it was a banker three. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it still counts for three, and it went in. The second shot he made was pure, and ever since then he was giving them hell. He did a they did a, Knicks did a really good job hunting Maxi and having a bogey uh, post up Maxi and, and and do a couple of turnaround shots in, in that mid range area, and he played some defense as well. He wasn't horrible on defense. He wasn't horrible on defense. So, like when you when you're looking at plus minuses, bogey, bogey, twenty four minutes on the night, plus twenty seven, plus twenty seven, bogey. Gotta give him his props. Got to. Y'all mind, mind if I praise God real quick? Go ahead. <laughs> Bum Donovich is retired. My my man is double O Bodega. Listen, I love this dude. He is a dog in the playoffs. Now, I have had the opportunity. I don't have a wife. I don't have kids. I don't. I, I work from home. I can watch a lot of ball. And over the last couple, couple of years, I've watched Utah. Utah is one of those states that they have a city that has deep, rich basketball culture from the franchise. And they've done a good job of bringing in role players when they had Mitchell Robinson and Reed Dobear to surround them. And one of those role players was Bondanovich. And I noticed this guy, even though they were to eliminate early in the playoffs, this guy would play his ass off. And he would always play better in the postseason than he would in the regular season. Those are the type of guys that I love. Josh Hart is proven to be one of those guys as well. Mitchell Robinson's proven to be one of those guys. Bodie has been one of those guys. He was that way in Indiana. He was that way in Utah. Now, in the playoffs, Bodie's used to playing 36 minutes. This season, he played 19. You cannot congratulate Bodie without congratulating Tom Thibodeau, who for the first time this season, 
Bodie was a first sub off the bench. I saw that and I was like, oh shit. There's he's my, my man's got something up his sleeve. <laughs> Tibbs was Tibbs was balling and freestyling all night. We will get to that. But that Bodie substitution, he's like, I'm gonna give you 25 minutes. And in those 25 minutes, he shot 50% from three and snatched down seven rebounds and played gritty, hard-nosed defense, and lucky for him, playing guys who are older, slower, exactly. And t- rely on the perimeter exactly so the matchup worked it wasn't a night for precious Chua. it was a night for bondanovich tibbs knew that tibbs and tibbs amplified that and Bodhi, as always my man comes to play in the hottest moments what i love so much was a quick decision making upon the catch he would catch it and he would make a quick call either run to the basket pull up for a midi up two dribbles or drain that three and i'm telling you if he's on this series ends in four he is more than anyone the key off the bench to have that heater that is unstoppable from three because these Philly wing guys, they're not the most elite defensive players outside of Batum. And if he can catch fire from the perimeter, the series, again, will be over way quicker than we all thought. Hmm. Anything to add to that, Ryan? Or are you going to move on? <laughs> I mean, Lee pretty much said everything right there. Bogey is definitely an X factor in this series. If he can... Because Bogey was part of the reason why the Knicks were able to cut down that early lead by the Sixers. Once that second unit came in and Bogey came off the bench, he just started knocking shots, especially that three off the glass. And like Lee said, started all, you know, the banks opens on Saturdays too. You have to remember that. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if Bogey, if Bogey can continue to play like this and knock in shots, again, that's another X factor right there for the Knicks because he's going to come in there during those bench minutes for the Knicks and he's going to be crucial during those non Brunson minutes as well. And he could just continue the scoring during those minutes. It just pushes the Knicks further forward in the series. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And Lee touched on the Tibbs adjustments in the freestyle today. <laughs> as a, as Ebony likes to call it, uh, he, he's been in the basement freestyling. You, what are your thoughts on that? Cause I, I mean, of course, one of the biggest freestyles also today was just, the Miles McBride's minutes, the Deuce McBride minutes in general, um, have him playing on ball. Maybe, you know, or or just even just have him playing on ball in the fourth quarter and having Jalen Brunson off ball. Like, it's funny. I've been asking for that since last year. <laughs> it's, it's crazy he's doing it this year because I was asking for that last year and he's doing that this year in the fourth quarter in the playoffs with Deuce McBride who hasn't done it all year. Like, to me, that's blowing my mind. <laughs> the fact that I haven't really seen that all season, and he's going into the playoffs game one, going, all right, Deuce McBride, you make the plays, and Jalen Brunson goes off ball. Like, what coach am I watching? <laughs> like, what is this? This is the same guy who had Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose, that I remember back in the day, Derrick Rose, they would double and triple team this kid all game long. And they would still just give him the ball right back. <laughs> and the reason why people say that you can't win with small guards is because of that strategy of we're not going to have that small guard be off ball at all. <laughs> the, the, to, the key to winning with small guards is having him off ball sometimes. And... To me, that was a big decision that paid off to me in that fourth quarter with having Deuce McBride being on board. But you know, shout out to Tish for doing that and also shout out to Deuce for being prepared to handle it and do it without fear and make a couple of big plays. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything else that you saw where you feel like he, he made an adjustment. Uh, yeah, this, the, the Mitch, the Mitch, you know, put, keeping sticking with Mitch. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, like you mentioned, the Nova boys for a minute were off, all of them. Um, jo- like Ryan mentioned, Josh Hart had a, a slow start, but he, he picked it up because, you know, uh, Brunson didn't shoot well. Dante, he he, he did hit a, 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 a big three, but he was the only, only um, Nick at halftime with a negative plus minus. True. That, 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 that was him. He was... And then B was the only sixer with a positive plus minus. True. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 Dante he didn't have the, the best of game, but so Thibodeau realizing that and not just being going with comfortability, just being like, okay, Dante is going to do his thing, but just going with who who was doing something, 
who was impacting the game. That was my biggest criticism with Tibbs, right? Mm -hmm. Going with who impacts the game the most. And, and he's doing that. And uh, as long as he does that, I'm cool. He, he got a fan in me. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. By the way, high right. plus minus of the night. Deuce McBride, 37. He had the highest plus minus at halftime at tw plus 25. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, Deuce McBride. Plus, yeah. Mm -hmm. Deuce McBride. Game ball tonight for sure. For sure, for sure. I am so happy to be on a podcast where you can have whatever opinion you want, but if it's opinion that everyone doesn't agree with, they will challenge you. And J. Ellis and Ryan challenged me heavy last year when I said fire Tibbs. And I had to defend that tape for many times on this show. And once I changed my opinion, y'all also allowed me to do that as well. You didn't hold it against me. You understood why I didn't. And you allowed me to make a case for why I was. And tonight, there were many things that he did that I absolutely loved. How about all the off-ball motion, Ebony, that we saw from the Knicks uh, when, when, when Brunson was struggling? Guys trying to get open, trying to come closer to help relieve him, but did some of the pressure off of him. Guys rearranging and re-situating re, uh, on the perimeter to try to get more wide-open looks. Bodon, Boji specifically, and Josh Hart specifically, and also Tibbs not being afraid to run McBride and Brunson together, which we hadn't seen much of that since OG came back and got that starting spot back from injury. We hadn't seen McBride uh, run with the starters or pair with Brunson so much in the backcourt. Tibbs did that. Tibbs knew when to bench iHeart. Didn't go back to him. Knew when to bench Dante DiVincenzo. Didn't go back to him. Stuck with Josh Hart, and that decision helped win this game. There were so many little small wrinkles and big wrinkles that Tom Thibodeau did tonight, and he outcoached Nick Nurse. Like that should not be forgotten. This was a masterclass coaching performance from Tom Thibodeau, and I'm so glad that I'm at least a year in back, back on the Tibbs train. Extend this man. Let's go. Yeah, give him, give him that. This, 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 There's levels to this. There's levels to no this. <laughs> Oh, man. Where, where my Mitch at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah, yeah. color, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, Mitch held this, held this man to one point in the fourth quarter. Yo. Crazy. Crazy. Yo. Look, yo. Real concern, though, for real. Not concern for us, but for the 76ers. Historically speaking, and B doesn't, hasn't really scored in the fourth quarter a lot in the series. It's been his biggest problem. Um, so with a guy like Mitch pounding him in the fourth quarter, it still might be a big problem for him, especially with the way he's being hobbled right now. So this could be a, another situation for those guys, <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, now I want to get into something a little bit serious, but not too Hold serious. On, before we get there, I want to say something about about, about Embiid. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Clyde will say Embiid shaking and no bacon. <laughs> 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 yeah, shake him and yeah, no bacon at all, man. None. Yeah, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. no meat. I, no I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. Yo, salute to the chat as well, huh? Salute to the chat. I ain't even salute to the chat in a long time. I just been talking and yapping my, my, my gums. Shout out to Picks with Timmy, Fritz Alessindor, Nick's Nation TV, Michael Moss, John Smith. Yeah, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? We got Prezi the bosses up here in the building. Shout out to Clory Lee. He said, Jay Ellis, need a lot of crow tonight. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat that Bojan crow. I'll, I'll eat that. Robert Paris, APAP, <laughs> Logic Sir, Space Ghost. Who else? Who else? Shout out to Space Ghost talking about that. Josh Milk had that. Josh Hart had that special milk. Oh, he did that. Yeah, man. Straight from the booby, man. If that's what you got to do <laughs> to hit threes, so tell your wife, double up tomorrow, man. Double up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's the beer cap with the straws. <laughs> <laughs> he said two fish. Bad boys. You make oh, my day. Play. You don't gotta go to Cambodia for that. That's what they have. Oh, <laughs> get it straight from the source. Straight from the source. Take that, Sergeant Sources. All right. <laughs> Damn, y'all <not> cooking. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Shout out to Face Ghost, <laughs> Nick Yak, and Grill, Just Nick. Everybody else is rocking with the show. If you like the show, hit that like and subscribe. <laughs> we have the heavy game talking, Nick's. 
and giving you uh, brush jokes. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we had like an uh, OnlyFan run where it was like OnlyFan jokes for like a week. Oh, great. man. Yeah. I had to stop. I had to, uh, it's good a family show. Good that times. was on me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, now let's, let's have a, a conversation. All right. Funny enough, the person I was worried about the least, Ooh. I started to get worried about today. I started to get worried about today. I, I, I'm going to do this like a job where I, 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 list, I list all the good things first. All right. <laughs> Jalen Brunson, our leader, been our guy, our rock all year. Uh, even at his worst, he still he still brings two to the ball and can make plays off of that, right? Uh, and he's he, he's brought two to the ball. But in, you know what I like that he did today? He played hard nosed defense. He got a key steal that led to a fast break. He fought over screens when it was when it was a uh, Joel and B Maxi uh, screen to screen stuff. He he fought over screens. He got five offensive rebounds, so he was crashing the glass. He did all the little things that you need to do to win. But what he didn't do was one, he didn't score the ball, which is what we looked to him to do. I understand sometimes you have off nights, you have you have guides on you making it difficult to score sometimes, and it might be difficult to score. Okay, cool. What I didn't like was I think he was calling his number too much too much and he's gotten away with it he's been successful at it a lot of times this season this game i wish he read the game better sooner because when it got to the fourth quarter it seemed like he trusted his teammates a lot more and was giving up the ball and that's when we started to blow the game open we have 40% shooters on this team who can hit shots. If they're going to W and they're going to triple you, got to give up the ball. Just got to give up the ball. Um, we're more equipped to handle those, those double triple teams this year more than ever. <clears throat> got to give up the ball. So Brunson, I know who he's killing himself in the teeth. He had five turnovers today. Didn't shoot well. I think he shot, what, like 16% from three and 30% for the field, something crazy. Uh, he made some big plays in the end, but I just need him to be more cognizant of getting everybody else involved and just moving the ball more. But amazingly, we won this game with our best player not playing his best, which really, to me, not a good sign for the 76ers. <laughs> not a good sign for the 76ers moving forward that we are able to beat them with Jalen Brunson playing like absolute dog poop. Like, uh, so I'm glad we won. Jalen Brunson in his post game said, when asked why he won, he said, Duke's McBride. And I want him to be the reason, a big reason why we win the next game. So that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I just I just want to say real quick, yeah, we we dominated from the from the whole game, the whole game, even at halftime, we were crushing them on rebounds, offensive rebounds too. And fast break points, which I said in in the pregame that that we had to do, we had to get in transition. They 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 set us their week there, so you know it was like twenty twenty six or so, I believe. I said that that's what they're ranked in the league with opponents fast break points. Right. And and, and we we did we did well. What we finished with, I'm looking at right now, uh, twenty seven to their eleven. Yeah, we killed them in the fast break points. And, and in rebounds, fifty-five to thirty-three. I also said that was going to be the difference too, because Tobias Harris is their leading rebound. Yeah, That's we already they fool on the rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias Harris is your leading rebound. I get and B was hurt, but the fact that no, and and that the fact that he is hurt, and you got people like Josh Hart coming out of nowhere, snatching snatching your soul, really, you know. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. It's crazy, and then we had we had double digit assists in a, a halftime, and most times we have double digit assist, assist by halftime it, it equals a win. Right. Remember, I said I was going to keep my eye on that. Mm. <laughs> I, I've been I've been doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
just not living and dying by the three, um, moving the ball, trusting your teammates. Jalen Brunson did better at that. Yeah, towards the second half. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did better because in the beginning, I agree, it was a lot of hero ball. Mm -hmm. I had mentioned that also in the pregame that that was a worry of mine. Please don't go back to that. Yeah, you, you do definitely that. said that because because in pressure situations. When you're nervous, even even the stars get nervous. You got a lot of stuff on you. You're trying to prove all these haters wrong, you know. So he might have put a little bit more pressure than he should have on himself today. Understandable. And then he 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 settled himself down, but uh he he did was was playing some hero ball. Yeah, for and sure. He, I I I love the adjustment. The first quarter, you know what I said? I said just like in the pregame. Uh, just like a boxer, the first quarter you filling your opponent up, and and I, and I was not worried. I didn't. I'm not. I didn't. Oh boy, what y'all doing? I'm like they filling them out. Right. Just like a boxer, first round. What you giving me? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't too I, worried I either it. because I yeah. felt like it was more jitters in that first quarter. I felt like we were getting, even though Brunson was putting up some shots I didn't necessarily like. I also felt like we were getting some really good shots too, like mm -hmm. the Hartenstein. Floater in the lane was a really clean shot off a of ball of movement. Um, there was a lot of shots that were like, there were a lot of in and out shots in that first quarter. A lot of in and out shots. So I feel like, you know, we settled down, we'll be fine. And then the bench too was like, Philly's bench, we know from experience. And uh, actually Lee said this, you know, when Embiid's not on the floor, it's really a struggle for them to score. We've seen that before when we played them um, when Embiid wasn't playing. So the time to kind of catch up and, and see what we can do. And it kind of worked out like that. Jalen Brunson was ass cheats. And one of my keys to the game last uh, last time that we had our, our pre-series pod was winning the non-star minutes. And that was both the minutes that Embiid's not playing and the minutes that Jalen Brunson wasn't playing. Tonight, we absolutely won the minutes Jalen Brunson wasn't playing. And sometimes we're actually better without him. Uh, that won't be the case moving forward. I have no doubt between him and his father's relationship, him and Tibbs' relationship, and his insane, unsatiable desire to win, that he'll do everything he can to watch the tape and be back to normal in that game. What I didn't like the most was a shot diet. Typically, he gained some momentum by getting to the rack, getting some fouls, easy free throws, or he'll, he'll shoot one or two for threes in the first six minutes of a game to gain a little bit of the rhythm, and then he moves into the mid-range. Today, because of the blitzing and trapping, he kind of started off in the mid-range. And th those shots were shaky. He got blocked a couple of times from behind by Maxi, And I think that hurt his confidence. And he never really would gain yeah. the momentum. And it never went back to his shot diet rotation uh, after that first quarter either, which really stunted him in gaining any type of flow with his shot. So, I again, no doubt that, that he'll come back. And, man, but the way the rest of the team is playing, y'all, Jalen Brunson's back. If he's playing 80% of what he usually does – I don't think this is going to be a series that we have much to worry about. And it's also going to be a series that allows the other guys to gain confidence and momentum movement to round two. I agree. I agree. Yeah, and I just want to just throw it right quick. Um, yeah, with, uh, again, like I think I mentioned it on the previous podcast or I mentioned on the morning Bruce show that the Sixers typically do defend Brunson well. Brunson hasn't. Brunson never really had a great game against the Sixers all season. He averages about twenty-two points per game, forty percent shooting against the Sixers. So you know, when when the Sixers put Ubre on Brunson, I mean Ubre is not a consistent defender, but it seems that like he knows how to defend Brunson really well. He typically does well against Brunson on the defense side of the ball. So I always knew that this was a series where. He might struggle at times to get his basket just based on the regular season and based how the Sixers guard him. But I do think that as the game went on, I do think this I do think Dibs and the coaching staff did find ways to get him easier shots. Like at times they would uh, at times they would do a pick and roll and switch Maxi on him. And he was able to take advantage of Mac of Maxi a few times to get a few buckets as well. And and you know, like we mentioned, you know, moving him off ball. And offer screens and things of that nature to get, you know, to get him, you know, a bit open so that, you know, he can actually operate. But the Sixers typically typically um defend him well. And yeah, he did force, he did force some shots, you know, some shots he should have never took. And I think, and I think it was one of those situations where it's like, you know, it's like you want to do well so bad yeah. that, you know, sometimes you kind of force it a bit. 
when in some situations that you shouldn't force it and you should pass the ball. But I'm confident, Brunson. I, I I'm I'm fully confident that he's gonna correct himself. And you know, and and you know, watch tape, see what the Sixers are doing with him on defense, and turn it up for the rest of the games in this series. But I'm not really, I'm not really worried. Yeah, Ubre before this game forced Brunson to shoot what thirty one percent from the field when guarded by Ubre. So it's gonna be tough. You're gonna watch some tape. You're gonna figure it out. And um, we're gonna get this win. We're gonna get the next win, man. We're still in really good shape. When your best player is struggling. And we still win, we in great shape. We in great shape. Don't let them have an actual decent game. Don't let them actually have a Brunson game because then it's, a, it's, a, it's another animal. It's another animal. And on top of that, I just remember this, when you're able to single coverage and bead, you take away a lot. I remember the 76ers falling to the Celtics. I remember that because old man, what, what's, 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 the, what's the old man sent on the Celtics? The Horford? Huh? Horford. Horford, old man Horford, guarding the NB one-on-one, <laughs> shut that down. And once that happened, the Sixers were in trouble. We, we got a Mitch who can hold him down one-on-one. And he's not going to be scoring on Mitch. Those little, those little fadeaway jumpers, he's not going to be able to do that on Mitch. He's going to have to come with force and dunk, and he doesn't have the legs to dunk. He's not. The only other option he's really going to have to score on Mitch really is to get him into foul trouble. He's going to have to drive hard and bait him into fouls. That's the only option he really has against Mitch right now. So that, that matchup is going to be huge for us, it's looking like. So we're in great shape. We're in great shape. Yep. Great shape. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, yeah, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man, <laughs> we going, we getting this chip. <laughs> Let's go. Hell yeah, we are. Yeah, it's just too much. Like, um, I like you just said, our superstar didn't have a good game. I, I, I the person you know and beat me. OG did what he did, but he didn't have a spectacular game either. Dante DiVincenzo didn't have a spectacular game. Nope. They were very, all of them were time leader. Like, you get what I'm saying? When we needed them, when they blitzed Brunson, he was able to get OG an open look, and he's knocked that down. That's all. We wasn't able to That's do that last mean. year. We that was is, not able to do it. that last year. We wasn't. It, that, that is it. Our emergency exits are uh, immaculate. Like exactly. Emergency. That was Quentin Grimes and RJ <laughs> Barrett. And that, that's yeah. what was that's what that was last year. And it was bricking those. And now we got OG and McBride hitting them. So it's different. It's different, man. It's different. It's different. Yeah. Um it is. and then again, sorry, defense, Jay. Defense makes a difference. That is our identity. That's why I was so I was so uh mad about the Grimes trade because I thought we were getting two cones. Where my cones at? Oh, I don't need to bring them out. I don't need to bring them out. Cause Bogey on his he in his bag. That baby posting up. He mm -hmm. on the dribble. He here on the pull up. He shooting. I'm telling you, he keep this up. I'm signing in a heartbeat. Look, 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 I got the pen ready. Pass it around. Pass it around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it. Yes. In the breakdown video. Yes, I, sir. I, just, I, I, I yeah, I love what he's doing. I love I just Tibbs, Rap City, you he he'll be right down there with Tigger. Like exactly. <laughs> Restyling. Exactly. Restyling those rotations. All right. Yeah, keep keep doing what you're doing. And his twin, they both pulled up with their ceilings missing. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. <laughs> catching strays. Damn, catching strays for sure. All right, all right. All right, good chat, guys. I see nobody wants to be in the Discord to hype up the, the win. I guess we'll move on to another part of the show. Bruh. Bruh picks. Yeah, bro picks today. I did good oh. last week, yesterday with my bro. Uh, yeah, I, I do got one. Okay, yeah. okay. We got one bro pick. And for those who don't know, bro picks are usually the worst plays of the game. And if it's not this game, it could be any game. And also, it could just be something stupid, dumb, idiotic that happened that you want to point out and just give it a bruh. So let's get to it. Ryan G, what you got, man? What's your bro today? 
my prop pick goes to half of the TNT crew, mm. Shaq and Chuck, because I was watching inside the NBA last night after the Pelicans and Kings game where the Pelicans won to get the eighth seed to face the Thunder in the playoffs. So, you know, they were making their picks, you know, regarding who they think is going to win each series in the first round. And when it got to the Knicks and Sixers, like we already know, Shaq and Chuck, they don't like the Knicks. So, of course, they picked the, so of course they picked the Sixers to win the series. What irked my nerves was when Ernie and Kenny picked the Knicks. Number one, Shaq sucked his teeth. Number one. Number two. You too big to Chuck, be sucking your teeth. Exactly. And number, and number two, Chuck got an attitude when Ernie and Kenny picked the Knicks over the Sixers. And my thing is this. It's like, all right, I know y'all don't like the Knicks, whatever the case may be. But it's like, if they pick the, if they decide to pick the Knicks over the Sixers, why you having an attitude for? Like, yo, like, come on now. So for me, it's like, all right, so since you're going to have that energy, keep that same damn energy. I don't want y'all picking the Knicks. No, I don't want y'all picking the Knicks at no time during the playoffs. Next round, don't pick the Knicks. Mm. Conference finals, don't pick the Knicks. Bruh. NBA finals, don't pick the Knicks. Facts. For, for, years, for years coming, don't pick the damn the Knicks. The bandwagon keep is closed. Energy. Keep it. <laughs> Bruh. I'm with you. I'm with you. The switch up. All, all the switch is happening right now. Hey, y'all was on that side when it started. Stay on that side and just hold exactly. that L. Just keep holding L's. Because it's, it's coming. Those L's are coming. And all that talk about to Perk, Shaq talk about when well, you know Perk picked the Knicks too. And then Perk called them out for not watching Knicks games. Which for Knicks fans, it's obvious that Sh Shaq and Chuck don't watch Knicks games. And when he calls it out, you know where they go to? They go to the card. Well, I want championships. I want championships. Championships don't mean you're a good analyst. I'm sorry. Give them a broad pick again for that. That Bruh. was crazy. I'm sorry. It don't make you a good analyst because you won championships. You don't make you a good, a good analyst watching the games of the teams you're analyzing. And that's how you know Perk Hit, hit a sore spot. When people start going to personal insults, you hurt them. Yep. You already know. Mm -hmm. you got, you're in their head. You're in their head. <laughs> you go, you accolades. First of all, one of the person people on the panel don't got something he got. That's a Which fact. Is a championship. That's a fact. Hey, listen. JJ Reddick never <laughs> he was never an MVP. <laughs> he wasn't a he was, he's a never, he's a better analyst than everybody everybody on that panel put together. Right? <laughs> facts. facts. That's facts. So hold that out. Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh him a couple brought him a couple of times. And shout out to the and chat. I, and, <laughs> and I would like recommend and I and I and I would recommend adding them to as permanent bras every day we do the podcast. Oh yeah, and yes, yes. Well. Cause I forgot. I forgot to I forgot to add Paul Pierce. We be on our black hoodies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, corny for sure. It's a, it's a can of corn because we got have ha ha Holly Rowe in there. So mm -hmm. get a can of corn. That's uh, a fact. We get Paul Pierce a bro just because he's breathing, <laughs> right? Gotta do that. Bruh. And Gilbert, I get kicked out of arenas. Mm -hmm. Also, Bruh. wait, wait a minute. Doesn't Paul Pierce have to wear a Brunson jersey? Yes, he does. If I, the I, Knicks I, make it out the first round. Ooh, buddy. Hell yeah. Ooh, I feel like buddy. Get ready. I feel, I feel like that Tupac wait. song. Yeah. I feel like the Tupac song for these haters. First off, F you in the clip you claim. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Yo, I'm out, I'm out to be like Drake and, and get the Tupac AI and rap about him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that that That's not originality to me. That's just... <laughs> That's just stepping in somebody's shoes. To be yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, and shout out to the chat room for reminding me. Bro picked also another bro pick. Next bro yeah, pick so. goes to uh the seven six is talking junk, but this person in particular, Paul Reed. Yep, bro. 
Paul Reed talking about all oh, we wanted the Knicks. We thought we could beat the Knicks. You cannot be the thirteenth man on the bench talking smack. And then when the times to play the game, you drop an astonishing <laughs> an astonishing four points and it five rebounds. Four points. It was lucky. My man was wishing upon every <laughs> guy he knew for them shots to go in. Right. And <laughs> got your shot blocked by Big Mitch. And you were a team worst, negative 21 on the night. Don't yep. uh, don't uh, shut up. Just, just shut up and take your spank take your spanking like a man, just shut up. Yo, he ain't learned from Tari Eason. You don't do that. If you if, if you're not the guy, you don't do that. You don't that. do that. You don't do that. You're just making it hot for everybody else Tari who Eason actually has to play important home. minutes. <laughs> Tari Eason got his whole team eliminated from playoff contention because he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Yeah. Talking about the Warriors and they come out with the the bottles with the Warriors, you know, Warriors. Yeah, Warriors <laughs> come out and play. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Warriors smacked that ass by 30. Yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And 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 then Josh Milk had his Josh Milk look like Josh Milk. Ah! It's a three sixty. It all circles back. It's a three sixty. Yeah, but exactly. Josh Hart had his his special milk. He out here breast milk. You make my <laughs> <laughs> okay. take, that, take that. All right. <laughs> all right, man. I'm good. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm okay. Out. I got. I got. I got some bro picks. Well, mine was Uber, one of them, but we already talked about that. Okay, okay. And I got to. I know we're not spending the block on each other, on on people on on each other. So I'm not. It's not really each other because there's a lot of doubters everywhere that this guy plays against, and people just won't give him his credit. So the Mitch doubters, man. Mm. The Mitch doubters. Now I be in these social media streets heavy, and I get a lot of flat behind a lot of my takes. Like, people don't g- get where I'm coming from a lot, you know? And I understand that. Because I always say, my, another one of my sayings is, we don't all watch the same the game the same, and that's okay. That's okay. That is okay. We don't. Some people look for certain things. Some people look for other things, you know? It's okay. We don't all watch the game the same. It's all right. We can have two different, you know, po- point of views, and that's okay, too. But I got a lot of flack in these streets about Mitch. I got a lot of flack about why are you a Mitch fan? Why are you a, why I'm a Mitch fan? What kind of question is that? Like, do you see what this guy again, this guy the does all the little things that the dirty work, the little things great that, that make the impact the game so like in a, a big way. So it's little things, the little details of the game. But they impact the game in such a big way. The fact that Philly wants to get into transition, but they can't because they have to gain rebound on this guy. Mm. The fact that he is playing disciplined defense, not jumping at it, but using his length. When he when you go up, I go up now. Yeah. When I see you go up, I contest now. Like like the fact that he's not trying to block everything, but he he can probably if he tried. But it's just the fact that he's playing disciplined defense. His impact and like it was straight disrespect and no 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 shade to 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 I heart. He's a great player. He's a good player, a good role player. But I understand his role. So to so for so, so many people to just disregard what Mitch brings. It, I have even the Philadelphia fans. They didn't even mention Mitch. It was straight with oh, I Heart is supposed to, to guard and be. No, I Heart and Mitch is supposed to guard and be. Yeah. It's just the disrespect. So all the doubters, this is what I meant when I said it's levels to this. Spun that block. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> yo, yo, everybody's gonna be mad at knowing to everybody in the spaces tomorrow, but I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning that block. Spinning the block on the space. Spinning that. Jump on it. Jump on it. Jump on it. 
I'm spinning. Que vos sabe? Jump on it. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna let people rock, but it's just like I got a lot. Like y'all don't understand. Like, I get it. You know the you know the meme with the guy with the sword and he's surrounded with like preparing for like a hundred people coming at them. That was me in these space in these, mm -hmm. these social media streets. You know, I have no doubt. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah, man. Yeah, Spin yeah, that block, Emily. Yeah. Spin those blocks. Yeah, Spin those I'm blocks. Doing, I'm about to. Nah, nah. Just, just uh, please stop putting people in boxes, y'all. That's it. Yo, okay. Emily, did you see the? Did you see the bounce pass? To, to, <laughs> did you see the bounce pass? The the Dante, right? <laughs> yes, I did. You know, oh, I he was saw it. <laughs> what <the minute>? Beautiful. <laughs> You know, I saw it. He, he got, he didn't make it. He, I think he might have no, missed it. But, but, yeah, but it's still, that pass was on point. So all the, again, I, I never questioned Mitch's vision. If you can get a, a, a offensive rebound surrounded in a crowd and find an open shooter, that is vision. That is vision. So, sorry. Mm. I, I don't know. Mitch was like, yo, I seen Harden sign through that. I could do that. Like, what? Let me show you. Let what? Me show you. I don't know. I was like, what? He said, he said, look, look, he hit him with the heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, maybe Dante might have been a surprise. That's why he might have missed. Like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, man. Yo, yo, salute to Jay Boogie, too. I see you, Jay Boogie. Oh, he says, if you're not Willis Reed, then you're not a read. Shout out to the family. Big ups to the KLT. Please hit that like button. Salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's. All right. Shout out to our guy, J Boogie. Always represent. All right. All right, cool. Any any more? Any more? No, I have no. We said Uber. I'm good. I don't think I don't think I have any more that I can remember. You know, my memory shot. <laughs> got you, got you. I'm good. I, th I, got, I thought I had an ooh pick. You got you got any Brusley? Yeah, I got one bro pick. Now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> while everyone's watching playoff games today, our U.S. government gave away almost a hundred billion dollars to foreign aid: the sixty-one billion to Ukraine, eight billion to Taiwan, and twenty-six billion to Israel. And all every single Democrat voted for the aid to Ukraine, and almost every single Democrat and Republican voted for the aid to Taiwan and Israel. Uh, while people are dying of fentanyl, the border is open and crazy and letting insane migrants in. Uh, child sex slavery and sex slavery in general is uh, wrecking the country. Inflation is making it hard for people to buy groceries, much less a house or a car or a property or investments. Uh, to give that much money to foreign aid when Americans are suffering, to me, is a dielectric of duty. And I think that when election time comes out, we should remember all this and vote all of these bums on both parties out, depending on what state you're in, and get new people in here who put Americans first in terms of supporting us and helping us just put food on the table. Not asking for anything crazy, not asking for a handout, not asking for anything. Just made it easier for me to start a business, easier for me to put food on the table, and easy for our most vulnerable to have a decent way of life. Our poorest in this country and most disabled in this country. So I just I didn't want the day to go away without keep it, holding those accountable on both parties for being bums and giving away our tax dollars, hard earned, I'm sure all of us, our tax dollars are hard earned uh, that we go to work for and it's taken out of our check to go to other countries while Americans continue to suffer. But Upik, go Knicks, baby. Go Leon Rose. Go Tom Thibodeau. Bruh. Go Jalen Brunson. Go Knicks. I, 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 they go my Upiks. You got Deuce. I'm chilling with Deuce. You see, I don't, wait, hold on, where we at? Here we go, Deuce. Little baby doll. Right, right, doll. right. Hold on, hold on, I'm about to use you about and to give all me... black too, little dog and all black. All right, all right. All black, ready, right? Camo. You got, you got, you got, you got Josh Hart. <laughs> and, and here we go with Mitch. That's my ooh picks. That's <laughs> your ooh picks. Ooh, yeah, because because they 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 all they Ooh. definitely they definitely. Hey Ebony, happy four twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yo yo, <laughs> I'm gonna celebrate as soon as this podcast is over. <laughs> Yeah, Lee about to got Lee's about to get me in my government reparations talk. I might go hold you, boy. I might go. <laughs> I'm not gonna hold you. I'm like every time I see foreign people get all this money, I'm like, y'all still owe black people money. I'm like, Lee, I almost came, I almost came with the pie like this. I'm like, y'all still owe black people money. <laughs> we, we like black people built this country for free. Y'all was able to get yes. trillions of dollars into different banks and build your government <laughs> and build your economy off the backs of black people. 
then promised us money and, and 40 acres mule, then didn't give it to us, then gave China, then gave Japanese reparations, Native Americans reparations, Jewish people reparations, and then burned our communities to the ground when we actually were able to build wealth. Y'all give people reparations, y'all give people money all over the place. I keep saying the government owes us money. Bruh. And gaslight you and tell you, but then build your own. We tried me, that multiple times, multiple times, multiple times. Uh, everybody, yeah. everybody, every time someone's like, "Black people don't need reparations," it's like, do your research on how many other groups of people in this country got reparations, and then tell me if they did one tenth of what black people have done to build the economy of the United States, and they haven't. Stop, stop trolling! <laughs> don't be a troll. Yeah, That's I think true. it's normal to debate on how tax dollars are used. I think it's 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 our money that's being used. Mm -hmm. And I don't have like total a huge issues on how it's used by Democrats or Republicans, because that's just gonna happen. We're all gonna debate about that. But when it goes to foreign countries, that's when it really pisses me off. Because Americans, no matter how you vote, we're all struggling. Things are expensive. Jail, as you know, you just bought property. You know, some of us are working two jobs, three jobs, trying to care for Listen. a child for a parent my mom i'm trying to help her out financially and it's hard out here no it's matter hard Biden's in charge, trump's in charge both parties are giving our money to foreign countries that should piss us all off in my opinion yeah I agree. life be life in and they just ignore us i yeah. agree especially one of those countries is committing genocide on the other side of the world i mean me and let's be real we already mm, give me all my get my super government talk <laughs> It's a whole other podcast. Podcast part two. <laughs> y'all get, y'all get me on my radical. I got my Malcolm X shirt on today. Lord, <laughs> see that's the type of mood you was on. That's the type of mood. See the playoffs, playoffs. See, I see the black too. That's it. That's it. Oh man, all Americans need help, but yeah, especially saying reparations. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. That's how I see it. We might need another pod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is a super black pod. Shout out to Lee. Shout out to Lee. <laughs> uh, but oh man. All right. We going to Ooh Picks, right? You said Ooh Picks, Josh Hart. Oh yeah, the, the, the fight too. Even though my man Ryan Garcia, he need bruh pick too, cause that baby I don't know. The only person I seen at a weight in that that chugs a beer. Like you're not supposed to do that when you're about to fight somebody to try to take your knock your head off. Like yeah. Word. I don't, I don't get nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, my Uber just goes to McBride hitting shots, man. That's he's a beast. Yo. He's been a beast. Yo, Big breeze. That contract. Shout out Leon Rose. <sighs> I, I, sign him that deal as soon as IQ was traded. How can he not be? Was he even in? The, yo, Leon wasn't even in the talks for executive of the year. They probably said because he didn't coach, he didn't executive to the cut to the, just to one game for like thirty seconds. So now he can't be. <laughs> 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 now, now Where's she going with this? Oh, <laughs> now I got now, you. Now, now I'm on the same in consideration of executive of the year. You know how that goes. Wild, yeah. Yo, Craig said, "What did you think about the Embiid Mitch jump ball, dog? They threw the ball to Embiid. Like they didn't even <laughs> like, they didn't even throw the ball straight up in the air. They threw the ball to Embiid. In my mind, I'm like, there's no way Embiid's gonna win this tip on a hobbled leg, and Mitch is able body." Like Mitch is winning this tip. They didn't even throw the bitch, the the, the not the bitch, the ball. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even throw the ball really in feel. Mitch's direction. Tell them how you really feel, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really throw the ball in Mitch's direction at all. They just literally threw the ball to Embiid's side. Pretty it's crazy. Cool. If, if if anybody has tape on that, just rewind the tape and watch the the toss and look how crazy that toss was. Yeah, guess who was tossing it? Scott Foster. <laughs> Tim Donahue Jr. Oh man. But uh, also, you know what was crazy on um, D chat came to the space and, and, and had said it how Leon Leon Rose and James Dolan sent out a a, a video to like the refs or, or the association to show the difference in files. Um show how Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so and, and they were talking about that. That's different. It's because it's different because they feel they have a chance. So I'm going to. You're not going to ruin my chance with your BS. So look, I see you. You hear what I'm saying? And this time they feel like they have a chance. Like I see what you're doing, 
here we go. You know, like. And the, yeah, and yo, and Fritz said it, they had a write up with the percentages. And the thing that stood out was Scott Foster had an above average foul calls on personal fouls. Um, but what also stood out was whenever he was challenged, mm -hmm. he had the lowest percentage of overturn calls. And today we challenged him twice and won both. Mm hmm. Well, oh, we beat the odds today, damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We challenged two Scott Foster calls and won both of them. So kudos for the Knicks. Who, they do research. They go above and beyond. They don't just do research on players and tendencies. Doing research on ref tendencies and releasing them is a different strategy I've never seen before, man. They put it out there before. It's like, you're not giving Embiid all these fouls for no reason. We're going to have these things printed up. Let's let people but know that, what's up. We know what's up. Like, man. That tells you what they think of this team, though, also. That's true. Like, that, that they've never done this before. And it's, it's because now they feel like we have a chance. But we don't, we might not have a chance if your referees get in play. So now I'm going to show you what your referees are doing. I see what your referees are doing. You know, I agree. I see this. I agree. Uh, I agree. Clutch move. I like, I like it. Mm hmm. All right. All right, yo. That's the show. Thank you guys for watching, man. We had a great show. We had a great win. Man. Game one versus the 76ers ends in a Knicks win. Usually that first game is crucial. Uh, we Listen, we got home court advantage for a reason. We didn't duck the smoke. And we get home court advantage so we can have the home crowd behind us while we're beating these teams. And it paid off today. So, Knicks fans, applaud yourself. We're gutting out this season through the good, the bad, the ugly, the down times, the down Julius Randle, the down OG Ananobi, the down Mitchell Robinson. You still battle back and won 50 games this season. Applaud yourself for still rooting for this team. And we're going to keep going. We're going to keep applauding. We're going to keep sticking it to these ESPN analysts. And we're going to keep winning. And we're going to rub it in their faces later. And I can't wait till this series is over because... The next series, I'm going to have a picture of Paul Pierce wearing a Jalen Brunson jersey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. <laughs> All right, man. Lee, let her know where you find you, man. Let's wrap it up. Uh, I want to give a shout out to <laughs> So you love the show. If you love the show, there's always another show happening in the chat. And that show is a two-man show between Alexander and Pitts for Timmy, two of my favorite people in the chat and two of my favorite KOT fans. They're always going back and forth, uh, roasting each other, roasting everybody else, sometimes roasting me, which I love. So <laughs> shout out Alexander and shout out Pitts for Timmy. Find me on Twitter at underscore Lee Estrebedo, L-E-E-E-S-C-O-B-E-D-O. Or search hashtag bum, hashtag Mavs, and you'll see me roasting these Mavs bums in the comments. I uh, started the day because people were talking trash about J.B. on Brunson and Mitchell Robinson, the Nets today. So I had to hop in those mentions and talk a little trash back. I'll be doing that all weekend. I'll be here all weekend and next week <laughs> hearing those mentions. All right. All right. All right. Salute. 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 All right. Ebony, let me know where you can find you. Find me here. Every post game, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Mad Nick Fan. Uh, run the pregame space every pregame. We there more welcome to join us on on Twitter. Uh, about an hour and a half for your techniques. And shout out to Jay who who joined us today. Appreciate it. I always appreciate when y'all come through. Definitely. <clears throat> um, and uh, post game every post game we run for the Liberty games when the yeah. Liberty season. Comes. That's what's up. That's what's up. President Boss says they need a, K a show on the KT the KOT network. <laughs> Who was yeah. that Liberty? The um picks for Timmy and <laughs> Alex. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I mean, hey, shoot, maybe Liberty too. I don't know. It's like truth be told, man, I mean I've been wanting to build out summer shows for KOT for longest, so which is why I even started to do the game show, just to have content in the summer. You know what I mean? So um you, listen. You know you know who should have a show on KOT, in my opinion? What happened? Fritz. I think I think Fritz should have a show on KOT. I think so I think too. He'd be killer on KOT. I think the fifth Beatle, baby. We love you. Yeah, Fritz. man. I think I think that'll be listen. I try to have a couple of these shows on KOT. You know, always have, it didn't always work out. But hey, man, I'm still looking. I'm still looking. <laughs> we'll get this. Yeah, man. All right, Ryan G. Let me know if you find you. 
You can find me on Twitter at Ryan G K O T. You can also find me on Instagram at Sir G is chilling. Sir G is chilling. That's S I R G S H I L L I N. And I know I saw some people in the chat that did not agree with my assessments about starting Mitch and starting McBride. But it doesn't matter who starts or who finishes per se. But McBride and Mitch definitely needs to get the majority of the minutes this series. And I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. And shout out to Fritz, who's been putting out the polls. So you can see me saying stuff and be like, y'all stupid. Y'all shouldn't start McBride. <laughs> What's the person? Let me read out the poll results. Because y'all, y'all damn sure this like, hell no. Nah, what the hell y'all talking about? Start Deuce McBride for game two. 62% said no. 37% said yes. 16 votes. Okay. Ew, start Mitch Robinson Ew. for game two. 63% said no. 36% said yes. 19 votes. He's like, yeah, fool. I don't know nothing. That's cool. <laughs> Y'all still ain't learned your lessons. You didn't learn your lessons. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, look, if if fans would love and beat and max to get great starts every game, then okay, that's fine with me. That's what that's what they think, you know. But the way I think about it, I'm like, look, if we have guys on our roster that can slow them down, why not why not have them start and slow them down so that they don't get into a rhythm? Yeah, for the whole game, you know what I mean. I heart and I heart and I heart and Dante are going to still get minutes. It's not like they're not going to play, but it's like my whole thinking is if they can slow them down, why not slow them down and start again? Why why allow them to get into a rhythm and then then you're going to bring in Mitch and they're going to bring in McBride, hoping that they can that hoping that they can stop them and they're already in a damn rhythm. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, and then when they get in the rhythm, blame it on them two people. <laughs> yeah, and then they're gonna blame it on. Mitchie McBride. Oh, they couldn't hold nobody. Yeah, because you gave them 8,000 shots when they got into a rhythm. It happens. Yeah, and just for some concept, con- context, the 76ers in the second quarter scored 12 points. Guess who was playing majority of that second quarter? I know. McBride? <laughs> Mitch. McBride was on Maxi for most of that second quarter. And you know the fourth quarter Kyle too. Lowry had 12, 12, 12 points in that third quarter. You know who wasn't playing? No. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I was that whole third quarter. I'm like, bring them in. I'm like, exactly. I'm, I'm like, like bring it, bring Mitch back, <laughs> bring dudes back. This is getting out of hand. I did not. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And then the fourth quarter, I ain't like it at all. Yeah, the fourth quarter, <laughs> Mitch and Mitch and Deuce came back. Then look what happened. They scored twenty two points in the fourth quarter when Mitch and McBride were back in the game with Brunson. So we're not just you know we're not just talking about our butts here. This is this is what happened I, in the I, game. I, I know. It's, it's like it's like apparently we don't know anything. So you know it, it is what it is. They ain't agree. It's okay. That's all I gotta it say. It happens again. It, it happens. It happens. It happens. Bare minimum, I don't think OG should be guarding Maxi. I don't uh, think so either. I think it, at it, least it at like least Dante. At least Dante to me is a better matchup. Dante Dante seemed like he was a little hyper today, and like I, I believe he has a better uh, second game. Like he has to settle down, kind of like what w- what Josh Hart did, but he did he did it in the game, in game. You know, maybe maybe uh Dante couldn't really recognize or or know how to do that in game, but I think he he has a better second game. Um, because again he did hit a huge three for us. I think he hit a three after and beat had tied the game kind of uh, yeah. Job, so. Sure. Did. Yeah, he hit a couple. He hit a, good, a big three in that first quarter, I think. For sure, for sure, for sure. All right, all right, cool. Now I got in the show for real. All right. <laughs> Ryan G, let them know they can find you, man. Oh, I already said it. Okay, my bad. <laughs> you said you can find me on Instagram on Sir G is chilling. I did the Sir G ish. I did yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I just went off. I just went off on a tangent. Okay, that okay, my bad. So okay. I just, looked at, I just looked at the votes and was like, how people ain't agree with me. So I was like, I'm just, I just let me just say my piece and just leave that that. Do me off, do me off. All right. Find us at the KLT Show on Twitter, the Naked Time Show on Instagram, and the Naked Time Show on Facebook as well. I don't have any anime any anime uh recommendations today. <laughs> no book club recommendations either. All right, cool. That's the show though. We'll be back next game is what Monday? Mm, don't yes, me. Monday. Next yes. game is Monday. So we'll be back Monday 
for your next 76ers post game. Hopefully, we'll be winning that game as well. All right. That is the show. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, shout out to World Wide West. Everywhere we go, we leave a worldwide mess. Some mess out here in these Knicks YouTube streets. That's the show. We out of here. Peace. That's right. <laughs>